HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Welcome, everybody. We hope everybody's been enjoying the Sabbath thus far. And we hope everybody got to check out the first lesson that we did, uh, Natural Healing. Um, this lesson, we are going into Our Drugs Righteous. And we're going to go into further explanation about drugs and the uses thereof from biblical standpoint and also worldly standpoint. Um, I'm Brother Zakwa, and this is Brother Kasafo, and we're Hebrew Readers Church. We greet everybody that's new. Uh, welcome. Um, if you have any questions, please send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com if you want to be more discreetly, or you can write in the chat below. We have no problem either or. And um, for everybody that is members and those that stick with us, shout the challenge. We hope everybody been having a great day and having a great week. And may Allah continue to prosper you in your works. Um, without further ado, Brother Kasafo, are you ready to get started? Yes, I am. All right. Let's jump right into it. To answer the question, let's search the scriptures to find out if drugs are righteous. Can you read Jubilees chapter 10, verse 10 and 12, please? Uh, Jubilees chapter 10, verse 10. And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines, for he knew that they were not walking in uprightness, nor striving in righteousness. Jubilees chapter 10, verse 12. And we explained to Noah all the medicines of their diseases, together with all their seductions, and how they might heal them with herbs of the earth. The herbs of the earth serve as a medicine to heal the diseases and seductions of the evil spirits from the giants. So they have healing purposes for us. Sirach 38 and 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. Now in regards to the natural medicines and herbs of the earth for healing, the consumption of medicines can be via inhalation, Injection, smoking, ingestion, absorption via a patch on the skin, suppository, or dissolution under the tongue. Of the which a person hasn't sinned against the law by either method of consumption. The cannabis and mushrooms and tobacco herbs are herbs that yield seed. Can you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, please? And Allaheim said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Tobacco has other uses like natural insecticide to save your garden from critters, boiling the leaves with a type of sage to use as a steam to clear the nasal passages when having a cold, ground tobacco on fresh wounds help prevent stinging, and for relief of skin inflammations, it can soothe itching and mild pain. Cannabis has multiple uses too. It's used to make cloth, cosmetics, printer's ink, wood preservative, detergents, soaps, lighting oil, topical creams for ailments and skin care, as well as very strong ropes, among other things. This fact is confirmed in scripture and cannabis is nothing foreign to the Hebrews among the herbs of the earth that were used. Can you read Testament of Solomon chapter 20 or verse 20, please? So I commanded her to spin the hemp for the ropes used in the building of the house of Elohim. And accordingly, when I had sealed and bound her, she was so overcome and brought to naught as to stand nigh and day spinning the hemp. Hemp was used among the people, yet we know the faithful were sure not to grow it with mangled seed. Leviticus 19 and 19, please. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. So, with natural herbs, you want to make sure it's not a mingled seed? Which means it's not GMO or splice or 
in our gardening and when selecting your cannabis or tobacco products ensure it's natural seed that is coming from we have mushrooms for what we eat and for its medicinal purposes make sure it's not mingled seed in regards to natural cannabis and natural tobacco there are different means of consuming herbs via food items treats chewing the raw leaves and etc Smoking natural herbs for their medicinal benefits are not a transgression of the law. It's just another means of consuming the herb. Inhaling smoking itself isn't a sin according to scripture. There is no law that is transgressed by doing so. In modern day, even people with asthma inhale the steam of salt water to open their lungs or vapor of the inhaler for their health. And when people cook using a flame grill, they inhale the smoke of the coals or wood used during the cooking yet they aren't transgressing by doing so. So inhaling smoke of the natural medicines of the earth is not a sin in itself. So the use of cannabis, tobacco, or mushrooms for medical purposes is righteous as Ahaya did create the medicines from the herbs of the earth for our healing. Seeing as though these are medicines, they're not to be used recreationally because they are medicines created for the healing of ailments for us. So if we're healthy and have no ailment that requires the use of such medicine, we would be misusing the herb to use it recreationally and not medicinally. In examining what is seemly for believers, as with anything we have been given for the service of man in creation, too much of anything can be harmful for us. In regards to the mushrooms, mushrooms, they also have medicinal benefits. They help people with depression. For example, some people may have medical doctors that have therapy because the mushrooms help people calm down and be willing to express themselves to know there are natural uses for that as well. And of course, it tastes good. I love portobello mushrooms like this. Continuing to see how the use of anything can be helpful for us. Sarah, chapter 39, verse 26, please. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron and salt, flour, wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of grape, and oil and clothing. Those things are necessary for our life, but if poorly used, they can be to our detriment. Drinking too much water can kill yourself. Eat too much salt and you'll run up your blood pressure to your heart. Drink too much wine and you'll be in drunkenness and eventually mess up a liver or something from alcoholism. Even too much food when used in excess hurts our health. Can you read Sirach 37, verse 29 and 30, please? Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meats. For excess of meats bringeth sickness, and surfeiteth will turn into collar. There we see insatiableness is one of the spirits of error. We can't be in excess of anything. Can you read Testament of Reuben, chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, please? With these spirits are mingled the spirits of error. First is the spirit of fornication is seated in the nature and in the senses. The second, the spirit of insatiableness in the belly. Interestingly, we see insatiability and greed are unclean spirits. So hopefully that helps understand whether it's Allahayim or devils that lead us to use things given to us from Allah in excess or immoderately. Can you read Sirach to the 31 verse 19 and 20, please? A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. Be not insatiable in anything, as we see even insatiability in eating is harmful. In regards to honey, which has great health benefits, the scriptures give admonition on it as well. Can you read Proverbs 25 and 16, please? Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomited. Honey has wonderful health benefits and healing properties. Yet, if you use more than is sufficient for you, it'll make you sick, just like food. The same goes for the blood of grapes, which produces wine. Wine has health benefits too. Can you read 1 Timothy 5 and 23, please? Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. You see, 
Drinking alcohol in itself isn't a sin. It's even used for feasting. Can you read Surah chapter 31, verse 27 and 28, please? Wine is as good as life to a man, if it be drunk moderately. What life is then to a man that is without wine? For it was made to make men glad. Wine measurably drunk, and in season bringeth gladness of the heart, and cheerfulness of the mind. See how doing things in measure and with moderation make it enjoyable? It's also, getting drunk in itself isn't a sin, because there are situations that require giving a person alcohol to help them out to ease their pains. Can you read Proverbs chapter 31, verse 67, please? Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink, and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. One has the liberty to get drunk if one likes, in the comfort of one's privacy at home as well, to understand getting drunk in itself is an sin. Can you read Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 and 21, please? And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. So we see he did nothing wrong by being drunken in his tent. Now, excessive drinking and habitual drunkenness, on the other hand, is a sin because a drunkard shall not enter, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. Can you read Sirach chapter 31, verse 29 to 30, please? But wine drunken with excess maketh bitterness of the mind, with brawling and quarreling. Drunkenness increaseth the rage of a fool till he offend. It diminisheth strength and maketh wounds. So we have an understanding of being the drunkenness and drinking in excess leads us to fall from the fruits of the Spirit and the keeping of the commandments. Can you read 1 Corinthians 6 and 10, please? Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Do you have the definition of drunkard in, in the lesson? No, I do not, okay. but I can get it real quick. Yeah, hey, I think that'll be important. I, I didn't see it in here. Drunkard is G3183, and it's drunken, intoxicated, Tipsy, that is a soft drunkard. A soft is a habitual drunkard. So mm -hmm. that's what it's referring to. A drunkard is a habitual drinker. Right? Drinking unto drunkenness. Right. right. So you're gluttonous. You're gluttony for wine or strong drink. Right. So if one drinks, that's not a sin in itself. But if you go beyond what is sufficient for you in excess, passing the limit for you to maintain modesty, it will open you up to fall into sin because you aren't using discretion. Can you read Testament of Judah, chapter 13, verse 7, please? Uh, the Testament of Judah, chapter 13, verse 7. For much discretion needed for man who drinketh wine, my children. And herein is discretion in drinking wine. A man may drink so long as he preserves modesty. So one has to know their limits. Just like you have to know when enough honey is sufficient for you unless you get sick, wine and honey are both natural things from the earth with health benefits, yet we still have to use discretion with them for our well-being. Can you continue reading, please? Sure. But if he go beyond this limit, the spirit of deceit attacketh his mind, and it maketh the drunkard to talk filthily, and to transgress and not be ashamed, but even to glory in his shame and to account himself honorable. We lose self-control and we're no longer sound-minded, unable to walk in the fruits, and our mind is attacked, and we can't control our tongue. And we know from the lesson on what defiles the temple, not being able to control our tongue and defile our whole body. Continue in Testament of Judah chapter 13, verse 1, please. Now, my children, I say unto you, be not drunk with wine. We are warned against getting drunk for these reasons. Can you read verse 3 to 7, please? For if a man drink wine to drunkenness, 
It disturbeth the mind with filthy thoughts leading to fornication, and heedeth the body to carnal union. And if the occasion of the lust be present, he worketh the sin, and is not ashamed. Such is the inaberrated man, my children. For he who is drunk in reverence is no man. For lo, it made me also to err, so that I was not ashamed of the multitude in the city, and that before the eyes of all I turned aside unto Tamar, and I wrought a great sin, and I uncovered the covering of my son's shame. After I had drunk wine, I reverenced not the commandment of Elohim, and I took a woman of Canaan to wife. So you see how I'm not using discretion with what we are given from Elohim leads us astray? Can you read chapter 13, verse 2, please? For wine turneth the mind away from the truth, and inspireth the passion of lust, and leadeth the eyes into error. For the spirit of fornication hath wine as a minister to give pleasure to the mind. For these two also take away the mind of a man. Right. Hopefully you see through the examples of food, honey, and wine that are things made for us in the earth for our health and well-being from Allah. Yet they have to be used measurably with discretion not in excess, and moderately, so as is sufficient for our need within the boundaries for us to maintain modesty and the right mind, or else it will cause us harm. We seen that insatiability and greed are not the spirits we want to walk in. This helps guide us to know what seen as believers when it comes to natural herbs like cannabis and tobacco leaf. Cannabis has a psychoactive effect affecting the mind and has intoxicating effects for good and bad, just like wine, on the usage. But we now know intoxication from natural things from Allah isn't a sin in itself, long as it's used with discretion, not in excess. It is commonly known the health benefits of cannabis and the natural tobacco is a stimulant and sedative to reduce anxiety and anger. Tobacco requires discretion because nicotine can be addictive if used in excess, yet it has its healing uses as well. We are not talking about the chemically corrupted tobacco products that contain different poisons to people's hurt. Now, if you like the flavor of natural tobacco for medicinal purposes, it's no sin. Also, we aren't talking about any synthetic cannabis that is not what Allah gave from the earth. Now, if you like to use the natural cannabis for medicinal purposes, calming down when some war of the mind attacks, or to help with sleep, for example, or for a physical ailment, use as is sufficient for you. As Allah said, it is wise to use the medicines of the earth while staying within the limits wherein you can maintain a sound mind. But if you be filled with it in excess, like over-consuming food, honey, or drinking to drunkenness often, you'll be doing hurt to yourself by whatever spirit is leading you to do so, and it'll eventually lead to health complications by the moderate usage. The same with tobacco over usage and immoderate use will lead to health complications. Also, if you desire to get intoxicated with grapes, just like Noah and Bilha, who got drunk in the privacy of their homes and committed no sin by doing so, just be wise so as to do so in the privacy of your home, lest you be led to commit some sin. Remember, too much of anything is bad for you. So with natural tobacco, too much of it can cause health issues too, as most folks are well aware. Nicotine isn't addictive if not used in excess, just like the coffee bean with caffeine. Both caffeine and nicotine are stimulants, natural stimulants at that. And if you don't use it in excess, you'll be fine. So you have to use more discretion if you choose to use the natural tobacco products for its medicinal purposes. And we mentioned the mushrooms, they are natural remedy for depression and they're used to help people in those issues of anxiety. The natural mushrooms I mean, through natural process. The cigarettes that are sold with synthetic and chemicals added into the natural leaf are poisonous, not the things that Allah gave of the earth. We do not say to make any use of those products, nor do we say to use unnatural cannabis.
cannabis has a lot of uses and the natural CBD stuff have shown to be good for some health remedies like anxiety relief, pain relief, restless sleep, mood enhancement, and etc. So its use is not a sin in itself to use. Both tobacco and cannabis are natural herbs that can be harvested, just like a person would grow grapes for a winery to make wine. A person may grow herbs growing through the proper legal channels in their respective locations and obtaining the necessary paperwork to do business. In the use of the herbs, one has to be mindful of the laws of the land so as not to lose one's jobs by the improper use. For those that use the herbs, the fault that can arise is if a person is not using discretion, do it in excess to their herb, health-wise, going beyond what is sufficient to preserve modesty, which opens them up to sin. Then they will probably fall into some sin not being in their right mind and eventually can develop health complications from their moderate use of the herbs. So it's not the natural herbs in itself that's the transgression, but operating in the wrong spirit in respect to its uses, just like with wine, which is also made from natural things of the earth. Consider these things when you use discretion in the use of the medicines of the earth, so as is becoming of a believer operating in temperance. Can you read Sarah 37, verse 27, please? My son, prove thy soul in thy life, and see what is evil for it, and give not the unto it. So you have to consider what's actually good for you. Know yourself and know what you need and what you don't need. Please also remember that we as believers are not to set a stumbling stone before a brother or sister, since charity looks not after its own. If someone's struggling with synthetic drug substance abuse, it would be best not to use such natural herbs in their presence. Instead, rather to talk to them and pray for them to overcome the struggles of addiction from the ingredients in such herbs and man-made drugs. This is the same with wine as well. If someone is a drunkard, then you know you're not going to go take a bottle over there to drink with them. Right. Not to aid them in this, something they struggle with. And as we learned in the last lesson on natural healing, how there are demons that take away the minds of men and make them toothless, which really looks like those demons are the ones that are causing people to go so far into addiction to where they start losing their mental and physical. Um, That's true. Yes. Thank you. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 and 11 and 13? for our exaltation to be mindful of others. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 11. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish, for whom Christ died. But when ye sin so against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, at least I make my brother to offend. Amen. So, say so you may use the natural tobacco, but you're at a brother's house who doesn't like the smell of smoke or the smell of the tobacco. You wouldn't smoke in his house out of respect for him, though we have knowledge that it's not unlawful to do for its medicinal purposes but we have to do all things that we may please all men, right? Look, all things are lawful, but not expedient. So something may not be expedient, although it's lawful for the brother's sake. Right. Also, there is no transgression so long as a person isn't prone or excessive in getting drunk too often to fall into the category of a drunkard. Right, or with the herbs getting intoxicated too often right. you know, to your hurt, to where you'll be unable to keep soundness and modesty about you. Sirach 31, verse 30, please. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offend. It diminishes strength and maketh wounds. Notice, see what the excessive drunkenness does? It causes the fool to keep on going until they offend. Okay. 
So when we want to do things moderately, so we keep our mind about us. The being excessive leads to complications people have from the use of natural things like wine and herbs. If a person is excessive and getting intoxicated, we have admonition not to be among them. Can you read Proverbs 23 and 20, please? Be not among wine vapors, among riotous eaters of flesh. Verse 21, please. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Also remember, we are commanded not to light a fire on the Sabbath. So if you prefer to use the herbs through smoking or lighting up your apparatus, whatever you may use, it is not permissible to do so on the Sabbath lest you sin, because Allah I am commanded not to light a fire. It would behoove you to make brownies or whatever edible or something on the sixth day to have for the Sabbath. Can you read Exodus 35 and 3, please? You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So about 37 and 27 and 28, please. Okay. My son, prove thy soul in thy life, and see what is evil for it, and give not that unto it. For all things are not profitable for all men, neither have every soul pleasure in everything. So not every person has pleasure in natural okay. tobacco or natural cannabis, yet it's not a sin in itself. Now also, we have to be mindful not to give ourselves anything that's evil for our soul. Synthetic drugs created by men in labs and etc. are not natural medicines of the earth that Allah gave, but are man-made and sorcered. Can you read Hermes, Vision 3, chapter 9, verse 7, please? Yes. Now therefore I say unto you that are rulers of the church, and that occupy the chief seats, be not ye like unto the sorcerers. The sorcerers indeed carry their drugs in boxes, but ye carry your drug and your poison in your heart. Sorcerers' drugs actually poison folks. Hence, the side effects cause more ailments on folks, unlike natural medicines that don't hurt you when used with discretion and moderation. Can you the definition for sorcerer, please? G5332, please. Uh -huh. um, Pharmacias. A drug, that is, spell given potion. A druggist, pharmacist, or poisoner, that is, by extension, a magician, sorcerer. This poison that is being created in these labs is being falsely called medications today in the pharmacies. Can you read the other definition for G5331, please? It's uh, the same pharmacia, uh, medicine, pharmacy, that is by extension magic, literal or figurative, sorcery, witchcraft. In truth, they are witchcrafts. When you read Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, that definition you just read was the definition for witchcraft. You see that what they're doing is not things we want to partake in. Sorcerers aren't going to make it into the kingdom, so let's not use their witchcrafts to poison ourselves. Can you read Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, please? But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burn up with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That word sorcerers was the first definition we read. It was a spell giving a druggist, or a pharmacist, a poisoner, or a magician. There's a place for users of these magic arts as well in the condemnation. Can you read it? Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 38, please. And I observed and saw another old man down in a pit, and his countenance was like blood. And I asked and said, Sir, what is this place? And he said to me, Into that pit stream all the punishments. And I saw men and women immersed up to the lips, and I asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are the magicians who prepare for men and women evil magic arts, and did not find how to stop them till they died. 
Notice the evil magic arts are addictive and the people couldn't stop using them till they died. To see the difference between the man-made drugs and the natural medicines. The man-made drugs are poisonous. People get addicted, they can't leave off until it's to their end. Whereas the medicine Alheim gave them to the good physician to heal men and continue on with their lives. In closing, if you have health issues or mental health struggles from the unclean spirits that war against the mind and spirit, the herbs and medicines of the earth are supplementary to the faith in Christ Yache for true deliverance. Working good works through faith in his name is your primary source for deliverance. Confessing sins and turning away from them because, remember, it was because we wouldn't walk in uprightness and strive for righteousness that we were given these medicines in the first place and had need of the medicines. Can you read Jubilees chapter 10, verse uh, 10, please? Uh, Jubilees 10, verse 10. And one of us he commanded that we should teach Noah all the medicines, for he knew that they were not walking uprightness, nor striving righteousness. Knowing this, let us turn unto striving in righteousness, whose end goal is Christ for everyone that believes. If we strive for deliverance, walking in the fruits of the Spirit through Christ Yache, we can be strengthened, depending on his name to sustain us and deliver us from the troubles of the mind and spirit as opposed to depending on the herbs and medicines primarily that were created since we wouldn't strive for righteousness. Rather, let the faith in Christ, prayer, and good works be our primary care doctor. Then turn to the herbs and medicines of the earth as a supplementary aid to our faith. Also, though we may not partake in the poisonous drugs of the pharmaceutical industry, we have to know that disobedience to the commandments, the voice of Allah Hyman, bearing the fruits of his spirits makes us no different than the users of those witchcrafts. Can you read 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, please? And Samuel said, Have Ahiah as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Ahiah? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as an iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion is as witchcraft. Not obeying his voice makes us no different than the sorcerers and magicians. Because right. it's all going against Allah. Hopefully these revelations from Allah are helpful to us all. Can you read Tobit chapter 12 verse 7 please? It is good to keep close the secret of a king. But it is honorable to reveal the works of Allah. Do that which is good, and no evil shall touch you. Amen. Amen. Well, this helps understand the natural medicines of the earth as opposed to the drugs of the sorcerers and the pharmaceutical industry. We don't advocate for the poison created by the modern medical industry, synthetic or chemically manufactured drugs that injure the body, but believe Allah and his medicines that are made of the earth for us and for our healing. And we hope everyone understands that true healing comes from faith in Yache and the word of Allah So we know it's our primary source for healing before going to see a good physician for a natural remedy that we have need of. That's it. All right. Um, if anybody has any questions, you could just send them in to hebrewreaders at gmail.com. Um, we're going to go ahead and pray out. All right. You ready, Catholic? Yes. All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Heavenly Father, Haya Sharia Haya. We thank you this day for allowing us to have breath in our lungs to breathe. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to see another day, another day for repentance, another day for setting our walk aright, another day for enduring. And we pray that you may give us the strength to do also. We thank you, Father, and we pray that you may keep us on the path that leadeth unto life. 
And allow us not to veer off of that path from the left hand or to the right. But allow us to do all things for edification, all things for growth, all things for love of the brethren, that we all may live. Ha'elahim, have mercy. May you watch over us and may you heal us. In thy name and in the name of Yahweh, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, we have um, Jesse Flagg. I hope I said your last name correct. I'm sorry if I didn't. Thank you so much for what you do. Amazing work. Thank you. Praise Ahaya. Ahaya be glorified. Uh, Baba Kuya says, great lessons, family. Well done. Keep pushing, my people. Ahaya be glorified. We're all part of the work. Every day that we walk, Every day we walk out of our house, every day we live in our house, and people see us, and the things that we do in private, we are all doing the work. Because we are all the example of Christ. We're all the example of Yache. Whether great or small, we all have our part. So, Ahaya, deliver all of us and keep all of us. All right, and with that, we love you all, and may you all enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. You all have a wonderful week. May Ahaya cover you, and may the blood of Yache protect us and keep us in all things. All right, Shabbat the Chala. HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church.